Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode number 41, Music Instruments. This podcast is sponsored by the application It's On My Way, available in the App Store now for $2.99. Check out the latest review of this app at macworld.com. Once again, it's called It's On My Way. It's available in the App Store now. Check it out. Well, welcome to yet another episode of the iPad Possibilities Podcast. I'm Tim and I'm the host of this show. And today I bring you the first episode of a series of episodes with a focus on music. I've been talking and emailing with a bunch of different developers and kind of scurrying the whole app store to find what kind of music apps are out there. And this episode will focus on music instrument apps apps that will allow you to actually play music and experience music in that capacity on the iPad. So I'm going to break this episode in a couple different parts. I'm going to first focus on different piano type apps available for the iPad and then move on to different instrument groups that are available and just kind of give everybody an overview of what kind of apps are out there what are the benefits of the different apps, some of the recommendations that I have from using the apps, and I'll just kind of go very in-depth with all these different apps. I've got over uh, three pages of different music apps, and I think a page worth of instrument apps, and I'll be just going very in-depth with some of the apps that are available for the iPad, and what to expect out of them, kind of uh, what apps you should get uh, for your iPad, my kind of recommendations. And also on this episode, I'll be speaking with Michael Eskin of uh, a company that, uh, that's a much of its company, but uh, he himself is a musician and a computer programmer and has an interesting background there and has actually created around 30 applications for the iPhone and iPad. And I'll have a chance to talk with him as far as the possibilities he sees as far as music with the iPad. So it's all coming up on this episode of the iPad Possibilities Podcast. Well, let me jump right into piano apps. As you have probably noticed on the App Store, there are a bunch, a bunch of different piano apps available. So how do you pick which one to buy or use? Well, I'm going to start off with my favorite traditional piano app. It's called Pro Keys. And the cool thing about Pro Keys is it comes with a bunch of different built-in sounds, a bunch of different pianos. Uh, Grand Piano, DX Piano, Magic Keys, uh, Lead 2000, some organs and accordion uh, sounds. They even have a Blade Runner uh, sound that if you're familiar with the Blade Runner film, that's the synthesizer sound they actually use during that movie. And this is one of my favorite applications that is used for... Uh, just creating music. It's got percussion things, so underneath you could actually be doing percussion while playing some melody up top. And the great ability of it is it gives you both the ability to do the small keys or the more life-size keys for just a single octave at a time. Uh, You do get two keyboards with the app uh, at the same time, so you have one lower and one upper. The screen's kind of split in half that way. And you're able to do uh, what they call solo mode, where you you only play one note at a time, but you can use notes above or below it to kind of bend the pitch and create a more expressive piano that you would not find in other apps. And there's also the traditional slider at the left side of the keyboard to do uh, that kind of pitch bending that way as well. There's other special effects you can do. But I've found that it's just a great app that I've actually used in performances at uh, the university I I went to to uh, just perform music on. It's a great app. Let me grab the price real quick here. The app itself is only $0.99, and it is my favorite app if you're looking for a traditional piano, a just a good piano to start playing music on. And it's only 99 cents. That's my personal recommendation if you're looking for a paid app. It also has this kind of duet mode where the pianos flip each other way. So you can be doing a duet, a one person each side of the piano. So it's a great app. Let me just demo right now some sounds that you can expect out of the piano. 
So right now I'm going to take you through kind of the different sounds you can get out of this app as quickly as I can because I don't want to spend a great meal of time here. Uh, note this is just getting recorded uh, out of speakers from the iPad, so it might not be the exact sound you get, but I'm just trying to give you an overview of this app real quickly here. So here is Grand Piano that comes with it. And then moving to DX Piano. And then from there, we move on to Magic Keys. And then from there, we move on down the roads. And then to LED 2000. And then I'm down to B3 organ. And then on down to Organica. So that's kind of a good kind of suspense uh, sound, I guess. And then or uh, the accordion right here. From there, we move on down to the Blade Runner sound. And that theme might be kind of familiar to you. I tried to play back Blade Runner as best as I could. And then on down to the mallets. And then I'm down to the 909 kit, a drum pad type app. And when you move to there, it gets rid of the keyboard and kind of gives you just different blocks of places to hit. And then to the space kit. So that's space kit, ethno kit. And then on down to Hip Hop Kit. And then the last one, Jung List Kit. So each kit, you have a total of 12 sounds. Each uh, block is broken up into two different things. And as you can see, you can actually, uh, or here, you can do more than one thing at a time, right? Because it is a multi-touch device. So that is kind of the overview of Pro Keys. It's by far my favorite standalone just piano creation app. And uh, there are some other ones out there. Um, another app that I'm going to talk about real quickly here is called Fun Piano. So Fun Piano is, I believe, a free app, or it may be 99 cents. I'm not sure prices change a lot in the App Store. But the concept is, is that it gives you kind of that dual mode that is in Pro Keys where you have two separate pianos that can face each other and you can be playing at the same time. And here's kind of the sound of the app. And when you're doing that, the keys on the other side of the keyboard light up so the player across from you knows what you're playing. So it's it's really designed as a duet piano. So if you're looking for an app that you're, you want to play piano with your kids, this is a great app to do that, right? Or if you just want to have a good app for duets, this is the app for you. It's called Fun Piano, and I believe it's free or maybe 99 cents. So check that one out in the App Store. Now moving on to an app called Synth. It's a 99 cent app, and it's, uh, as it sounds, a synthesizer. It comes with 
Uh, many sounds, comes with more sounds than are found in the Pro Keys app. I won't go through all of those, but it gives you a great deal of control over the sound. You have delay amounts, delay time, you can delay feedback, delay filter and distortion. You're able to adjust all of those with a turn style adjustment. So I'm just gonna start playing a little bit here. And this is delaying amount. So you can hear it's delaying some sound there and then delay time. So you can do all these different uh, feedbacks and distortion type things. And you can hear right now it just delayed time. I didn't touch anything, it was just delayed from when I pressed the key. So you can do a lot of different things and there's a lot of different built-in sounds. I, I'm, I'm guessing around 30 plus sounds. It's got some things from like outer space type uh, Sounds like that, ghost. So the instruments included are pretty diverse. It'd be great to use in kind of the creation of a soundtrack to have all these sounds instantly available. And it has some regular ones as well. But uh, it's a great app. It's a lot of fun to play with and you're able to go through all the different octaves. There's no option right now to have the big keys like you do on pro keys, so you're stuck with the smaller keys, but that gives you more octaves at the same time. But there's a lot of amount, a lot of control you can have with the sounds that you're able to get out of this app, which is something that's very appealing to me. And for 99 cents, I think it's a great app. It's called Synth with an exclamation point. And it's just a great app. Uh, basically, uh, how the instruments are divided within this app are color-coded. So the pink ones are uh, bass apps, such as this one here. That's why I'm in the high octave, so it's on a bass. So you got bass apps, and then you move on to effects apps, and then you move on to lead. So uh, these are kind of your solo apps, or solo instruments, I mean. And then to the green section are pads. So these are different kind of sound effects. And then to drums in yellow, and then to the last one, you have a sampler. So it's got a lot of different instruments, a great value for the 99 cents that you get out of this, and uh, hi highly recommended, and that's called Synth. Now, moving on to an app called JamPad. This app is uh, kind of cool. As the name sounds, is it provides a place where you can actually uh, jam out. You have the guitar underneath, or perhaps a different instrument underneath as you pick, and you can simply jam the different chords. It has C, D, G, E minor, and A minor. As I'm playing uh, now, the C major chord. And you can just simply jam on piano, electric, uh, and different, just, there's a lot of different uh, instruments you can use to jam on top of. So, um, what the app is really designed for is just a uh, kind of an experience to jam. You have an electric guitar with strings included. And this is, uh, they have their own kind of built-in strings that you just pluck. So it's kind of a very, it's a very diverse app that I think has a lot of value to it. And I believe it's absolutely free. There's some extra features, extra instruments that you get from paying uh, for some upgrades. So there are some full version features that you can uh, get uh, by just upgrading. And the way uh, you upgrade is in app, it's 99 cents. And uh, to uh, kind of rotate across the board, you actually, it's a, pretty cool thing you just drag your finger and that moves you across the board so it's a kind of a seamless way to do that uh, it's not like the other apps where you have the octave shown above uh, where you're at but it's a uh, it's a great app if you're looking for something to just uh, have uh, something to jam to right so it's called jam pad a great little app on the ipad so now, along with those same lines of Jampad, comes another app called Musical Touch. Now, if you're a musician looking for another app to jam out to, this is a great alternative. It is 99 cents, and what you get are um, basically two keyboards. You have these uh, 
spanning from second octave C to fifth octave E. If you're a musician, you'll know what that means, but kind of the center of the keyboard here, you have those octaves to use. And uh, you get those two octaves in the different instruments of piano, guitar, organ, synth, or electric bass. And the cool thing is, you'll have different uh, things you can jam out to. So it comes with pop, R&B, R&B 2, rap, rap 2, dance, house, techno, rock, and jazz. And I'm gonna play these for you now, just kind of get a feel what this is all about. So this is R&B, and this just plays underneath as you kind of jam out to it. So that's R&B, and here's R&B 2. So it's R&B 2, and here's pop, you know? Here is the rap background. And here's rap two. And here is uh, the dance. Um, and here's house. As you can hear, I'm just jamming on top of it. So that's what the app's really designed for. Here's techno. And it's designed so you can just play on top of whatever you're hearing. So that was the synth instrument that you're just able to jam on top of it. So it also has rock, as I'm playing right now. And it has jazz. So that is Musical Touch. It's 99 cents and well worth it if you're looking for an app that is basically designed for you to jam out to, right? So uh, those are kind of the different piano apps that are more traditional. Now I'm going to move to something a little bit more abstract. So there's a lot of different piano apps and some of those get pretty abstract. And one that people have heard a lot about is called Magic Piano. And the concept behind this app is uh, many things. Uh, first off, it provides different types of keyboards. So you have a blank slate of just a black screen where it's very abstract, very abstract as far as what you play. Then you have uh, kind of a uh, spiral key a keyboard, and then you have a more traditional type keyboard, the just the vertical length, you know, keyboard, and then you have a circle keyboard. So. And it's kind of cool. You can drag and pinch and uh, the actual piano changes if you drag and pinch on the screen of the circle one. But the coolest thing about this app is it's so easy to understand even for young children. If you're looking for an app, if you have a one-year-old or a to two-year-old, depending on how advanced the child is, this app he or she will understand Out on that black screen, especially. I, I recently had an opportunity to be with a young child. She was uh, one and a half years old. And on the blank black screen, she instantly understood as I just demonstrated to her, as you touch the screen, the screen would show where your finger hits with this yellow marking and would play a sound. And uh, she would understand how the chromatic works like this, where if you don't let go, it just you know, it's chromatic. And she would understand that, and she would come to the iPad and just start playing the piano. And this is something that Magic Piano offers that no other app offers. It's one of the few apps, uh, I shouldn't say few, but one of the very easy to understand apps for very, very young children. I'm talking about... Uh, little bit over one years old she understood this app how 
you have this black screen that if you just touch it, it'll make a sound. And she was banging away at the piano and making some music and all sorts of great things. But that is the one thing. If you're looking for an app for a young child that will instantly grab it, this is it. And if you're looking for an app as an abstract musician, if you're a composer looking for something more abstract, this is the app for you. This is one of my favorite apps on the iPad because it really does demonstrate the brilliance of what you can do with this device. My favorite mode is that black screen where uh, you can just have it play random notes where uh, it doesn't, you don't know what you're gonna play in advance of playing it. But uh, it's the most abstract music you'll ever try to play because you really don't know what you're getting. And you can do a lot of things with the rhythm to create a good groove and a good sound out of it. And uh, it's a very versatile app. It's got um, songbooks built into it, kind of in the vein of Tap Tap uh, games, the Tap Tap Revenge games. And you can do duets with people across the world. And it's a just a brilliant app that I believe should be on every iPad pre-installed because it just showcases the brilliance of the iPad and what you can do with it. So it's Magic Piano and it's highly recommended. I believe it's uh, four or five dollars. I'm not exactly sure on the price. Um, those prices change every now and then, but I'd highly recommend Magic Piano. So moving on to another type of piano app is called Cat Piano. This is something a bit more crazy in that uh, it comes, uh, it's basically a piano that has a bunch of different uh, cats um, that are pitched, right? So you have angelic meow. And you have a bunch of different p uh, cats built in here. So the concept is, uh, I mean, it's kind of annoying at times, but uh, it's fun with if you have animals uh, to pull out this app and they'll react in different ways as animals do when they hear an other animals. So it's a great little app. I think it's a buck or two. And uh, that's all I have to say about Cat Piano. Uh, I'd recommend getting it just for amusement's sake, but not really any musical value out of that one. Now moving on to something uh, in the vein of Cat Piano is Voice Keyboard HD. Now this app is... I have to say just brilliant. Now, the concept behind this app is you record yourself a singing, humming, saying a catchphrase, or whatever you wanna record. So you can record anything out of any length, and it will take that recording and uh, make a sample out of that to be used on a keyboard about uh, two to three octaves in uh, distance. So you record your voice, and I'm gonna do this right now. Just test it out here. La. So I just recorded that <laughs> on the voice keyboard app with this simple record button. It's a very easy to understand interface, and I'm gonna uh, demonstrate what that sounds like right now. So I'm just gonna start playing some notes here. La. And you can turn off uh, the sustaining mode as I just did. But if you have sustain on, it'll play the full value of what you just recorded. And it has a, a number of built-in sounds and different things like that. Birds, so I'm switching over to a built-in sample. And there's a number of built-in sample um, some voices, some instruments, some different uh, just effects. And I'm gonna do uh, another type of recording, just me talking here. Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast. So I just recorded that and sampling it now down to the piano and uh, kind of demonstrate what that sounds like. Welcome, welcome iPad Possibilities Podcast. Welcome. So as you can hear, you can. This is the most well, one of the most diverse apps as far as the sounds you can put on here. You can record a real instrument, say a saxophone or a clarinet, and have that sampling down to actually create an instrument, a keyboard out of that. 
and you can save these samples and it's a great uh, app because this now enables you to create your own cat piano, your own dog piano, your own bird piano. It, it gives you the ability to create whatever kind of keyboard you want. And that is a really cool thing. It's one of my highly uh, highly recommended apps after playing with this for just a few minutes. First off, the interface is dead simple and the power of it is great because you have the ability to create whatever kind of sound you want and it gives you great ability to, you know, it has ability to save the song. You can play a recording of a song and save it. So say you take your sample of your voice or whatever you want to do and you play a song, you're improvising on the piano, you can save that and share it via the web and you can also uh, edit the waveforms that you record for the sample and do a great number of things such as reversing that sound and time shifting it as I'll do now. So I'm time shifting the notes. It takes a few uh, seconds, probably 10 or 20 seconds to do that. But once it's done, you can time shift the notes so it can um, basically sound a lot different. So I'm doing that right now. But Voice Keyboard HD, it's, a, it's available both for the iPhone and the iPad. There are different apps I should mention. But this is one of my favorite apps that I've come across that I think brings great power to the musician because they can create their own samples right there on the spot if they need to do a recording. It's uh, it's $2.99 in the App Store and I'd highly recommend picking it up. And let's see, it's almost done doing the time shifting. It does take a, quite a bit of time doing that. It's almost done here. Let me wait just a couple seconds and uh, just kind of give you the real time effect of this. And it is done now. So here's time shifting. Welcome. So uh, that's Voice uh, Keyboard HD. It's uh, uh, one of my favorites. It's a very cool app, and that kind of rounds out all the different keyboard apps I want to talk about today. So out of all those apps, which ones should you get? which uh, piano apps deserve to be on your iPad. Well, I'd say it depends on what you're looking for. If you want kind of abstract music and an app that is great for young children, I'd say go with Magic Piano. If you're looking for a more traditional type of piano that you could really create some great music with, I'd say go with Pro Keys. And if you're looking for something that you can jam out to, I'd say go with either Jam Pad or Synth. And if you're looking for an app that is designed uh, so you can create whatever kind of sounds you want, I'd say with go with Voice Keyboard HD. So there is no one app that is perfect for all people, but I'd say there's a wide variety of apps and they each have their own value. And I'd recommend pretty much all of those apps I talked about today. So we will have promo codes. I'll mention at the end which apps I'll have promo codes for, and those will come on a first a come first serve basis. So I'll let you know about, know about those in the end here. I'm gonna move on to some different instrument apps uh, right now. So I'm gonna move on now to some different keyboard apps, uh, mostly organ apps. So I've got here Pocket Organ C3 B3, and it looks exactly like a you know organ. It's got all of the different. Um, pulleys and levers that organs have and it operates exactly like an organ. So I'm going to play back some of the sounds here. And there's all sorts of different uh, pulleys that you can do. So I'm changing some of these pulleys down and pulling them all down. So there's a lot of different pulleys, a lot of different effects you can do, and it really emulates that of an organ. So if you're an organ player, uh, this is a great app. It's called Pocket Organ C3 B3. So moving on to another organ app. This one's called Church Organ, and it's a pretty cool app because it's uh, designed for, you know, church organ. So it's got, you know, different instruments like a clarinet that are organ-based sounds. 
and it has trombone and tuba, and it's really designed after a short church organ, which are a little bit different from the traditional organs out there. And one of the cool things is you can uh, just slide around the different octaves in a very easy to understand interface. And you can also, which is something interesting, I haven't seen this before in other apps, is change the tuning reference. So most uh, tuning pitches are around 440 uh, HZ, uh, Hertz, I believe is what it stands for, but that's uh, Concert C traditional, I believe. But uh, those, you can change that in this app. So C will sound different and you can change it uh, just with a simple lever. So I'm at 470 now, down to 400. So it's got a wide span of how you want to tune your organ, which could come in handy if you're playing with some older instruments that weren't designed around that 440 standard that music has evolved to now. So that is a very cool feature of this app. And it's a, a very nice designed app. We do have some promo codes of this one available, and I'll let you know about those at the end. But that's Church Organ, another great organ app for the iPad. Now, moving away from organs are that of accordions. Now, accordions are kind of a version of keyboards, and it's kind of a portable organ, if you will. So you have a keyboard below, and this one I am using is called uh, Piano Accordio. And it really looks like an accordion. The keys themselves are not pure white. They're more that accordion kind of vanilla look to it. And it's got pretty much every different type of chord. As many know, accordions, they have built-in chords. You just press a button and it plays that chord. So here's E. And then here's E minor. So the cool thing is it's got all these different chords and it has even more chords than I've seen in the uh, Runaway Hit app called uh, Accordion and it's got even more um, more uh, chords available. So I'd actually recommend this more than the one available called Accordio, Accordion uh, that's gone really popular. It's called uh, Pocket Accordio and it's a great app. I'm gonna play some of these chords for you. So that is what is known as Piano Accordio. It's um, probably my favorite accordion app so far. The other one I mentioned was Accordion HD, and it looks uh, it looks a little bit prettier, a little bit different. It's got a total of, looks like seven different chords, both major and minor actually, so there'd be 14. So you just play whatever chord you want. You don't know what these chords are though, which is a downer. With the other app, it's actually labeled. It's got, it looks like 50 plus different chords. This one, you only have 14 chords and you have a switch between major and minor. So here's major and here's minor, which didn't really sound a bunch different. So uh, it looks like an accordion, a very, very, uh, very great app. So it's accordion, but I'd highly recommend um, piano accordio even better than that one. So another interesting app I've found is Accordio Pro. It seems to be that same maker of piano accordio, but this one is, it doesn't have what appears to be the traditional keyboard underneath. It simply has the uh, buttons for the different chords. So, and there's some that link together, such as G1. I guess uh, with the accordion, the way it's built is some of the buttons link together with each other. So this might be for true accordion players the way to go. So here's kind of the first row here. And they can go down. And then, so that's kind of the traditional, that's kind of the melody layout there where you're able to go up by different notes. And it's much more traditional to the accordion without the keyboard. 
And then above that, you have different chords you can play on top of that. So uh, here's G. And then C. So it's a much more traditional type of an accordion, and I actually kind of prefer it to the traditional one, the, the key keyboard based ones that I've seen. So that one is known as Accordio Pro, and it's available in the App Store. So I'd check that one out if you're an accordion player. Now I'm going to move on to an app called Air Harp. And as it sounds, is it's a harp uh, designed for the iPad, and it looks exactly like, you know, a traditional harp. So you can pluck the strings. And it works really well. It's got some built-in uh, songs. So right now I'm playing Row, Row, Row Your Boat. So uh, the, the sheet music just appears right behind the line that you're supposed to pluck. And it's a... Uh, just a great little app. If you're looking for a harp, I'd say go with Air Harp. It's the best one I've seen so far. And uh, that's Air Harp. So now moving on to kind of the percussion section of the instrument list here. And I've got an app called Bad Haran Drum. And it's a very, it's a very simple app. You're able to change the design of the drum itself, which doesn't change the sound, I do not believe. You're able to change the design of how it looks, and all you do is simply touch the screen in various parts of the drums, and it sounds differently. I would guess emulating the exact sound of the Bad Haran drum. So here it is. So a very simple app, and if you're looking for a Baharan drum, I'd pick it up, but uh, I don't see a great deal of value for those that are not a Baharan drum player. So that's just my take on it. It's a great little app. Uh, I'm not sure how much it costs. I think it's 99 cents if I, I remember correctly. But an app, but an app I do recommend is called Bulls HD. And what this app is, is you've got different bowls and uh, whistles and or not whistles but bells that you just touch so you have in the center here a total of what appears to be one two three four five six uh, seven different bowls surrounded by four different bells or chime type deals and then two other kind of bigger shields on the outside so i'm just going to play with this and uh just let you know how it sounds So that's a kind of a quick overview of Bowls HD. It's a pretty simple app, a very beautiful app though. They did it well as far as the look and feel of it all. But uh, you've got many instruments there that you just simply can play and it's called Bowls HD. So I'd, I recommend picking that one up if you're into that kind of an app. So now moving on to a more traditional percussion app. It's called Drum Kit XL and it's on sale now for 99 cents because he admits the developer is still working on implementing a great number of features that have not quite made it into the iPad version. So I should note that before I uh, kind of go into it, that grab it now while it's on sale before it goes up in price, because uh, it's a great app that I found even with this most basic version, it gives you a, a drum kit. So um, it gives you basically your behind the seat of a drum kit. Uh, you got your bass drum, your snare drum, your, uh, Symbols and things like that and even the foot pedals are there and all that so I'm gonna play a quick sample of the different sounds you get out of this app
So that's uh, kind of an overview of the sounds you get out of this. As uh, you can take advantage of all 10 fingers when using this app. Uh, if you have 11, you can take advantage of 11 fingers as we found out. But you can touch multiple drums at the same time and I feel much more comfortable behind this uh, drum kit than I do the regular ones. I'm not very coordinated when it comes with the sticks and all those kinds of different things. But if you're a drummer and need to practice kind of the kind of layout or whatever, I'd say uh, this is a nice little app to do that. It's only 99 cents uh, for a couple more weeks here. And I'd say grab it today. I believe I do have some promo codes as well. If you want to check out for a free copy, I can uh, provide that with a couple of uh, the folks out there. So it's Drum Kit XL. It's a great app that I will leave on my iPad after this music segment is done. So now we're going to take a little bit of a break from me just going over the different apps. And I'm going to bring you to an interview I did with Michael Eskin. He is... Uh, kind of an Irish Celtic music expert and is also a computer programmer uh, by trade and background and everything like that. And he's created a bunch of different apps for the iPad revolving around that, that kind of music instruments, the Celtic instruments. So a bagpipe type thing, so Yulian. And here's an app called Yulian B. I'm just going to play a quick kind of sound demo here. So with bagpipes, you get your drone and you just hit that. So uh, what this app, what he's created are a bunch of different apps that emulate perfectly what the Irish or the traditional Celtic instruments are like. And the benefit here is they're not the $10,000 that some of these instruments cost. So I'm going to take you to that interview now to kind of cover what those apps are all about and what his goals and desires of uh, his apps are for the iPad. So um, we'll take you there right now. Well, I'm here today with Michael Eskin, and he's a iPhone developer, a musician. Uh, what, what, tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, well, professionally, I'm a firmware developer for um, embedded Linux systems here at Connection Systems, and I've been doing professional software development pretty much my whole career, about 20, well, 30 years now almost. And um, uh, in my spare time, I do a lot of traditional um, Irish uh, music, uh, sort of the pub session scene. It's the kind of music you hear in River Dance, or you might have heard in the in the movie Titanic. Um, and I play the Illin pipes, which are this kind of odd uh, bellows-driven uh, complex bagpipe, as well as the uh, Angle concertina, which is like the small squeeze box that you'd see. And um, I started doing iPhone development back uh, last November. Uh, November of 2009, mostly because I had, um, on this particular bagpipe I play, the Illin Pipes, it's, it's, it has a whole bunch of different sections to it, pieces to it. There's a chanter that you make the melody on, there are drones that, that uh, make a constant tone, and then there are these other little pieces called regulators, which you um, make chords with. And they're very expensive. Um, these instruments are like over $10,000. And I was looking at this at the iPhone one day, and I realized that the, the, the screen of the iPhone was almost exactly the same size as the set of regulators that are used on the set of pipes. And I had this crazy idea of building a set of regulators on the iPhone just to see if it was possible. These regulators are played with the side of the hand. They're kind of, you sort of squash your hand on these keys. Um, and I kind of set off with this idea of building a set of virtual regulators on the iPhone and amazingly found, uh, you know, actually recorded my pipes, recorded the regulators on my pipes, and found that this thing actually worked and that other pipers were interested in, um, in doing it. And I, I kind of realized that I had the skill set, you know, both because I could play the instrument as well as do the coding, as well as make the recordings and sort of put the whole thing together, that, you know, I kind of was like, if I didn't do it, nobody else was going to. So I felt, I felt like it was kind of like my, you know, my duty, my destiny to at least try it. And um, that app led to, you know, because I play concertina, I, it led to doing a whole bunch of concertina-based apps. Um, turns out the concertina, there's about five different styles of concertina in the world. Um, and everybody who plays them, you know, I did, first I did the Angle concertina because that's what I play. 
Um, it was interesting trying to figure out how to use the accelerometers and all that to simulate the bellows push and pull on the real instrument. As soon as I released that one, then people who played English concertina said, hey, could you do an English concertina? And people who played a Hayden concertina said, hey, can you do a Hayden concertina? And I ended up with about five or six different flavors of concertinas, most of which I don't play. I play the Anglo, and I've learned to play the English just from my own apps. But uh, so there was this whole series of, of apps, you know, mostly, I mean, they were good instruments. You could play them. They were very realistic in terms of their sound and how they how you actually play them compared to the real instrument. I mean, that was to me very important that the instruments not be toys, that they actually be represent the real instrument. But the iPad totally took these things to a, to a place I couldn't even imagine. Um, the having a large screen with 10 touches, this was the key, was the number of touches. The phone was limited to five or six touches. You know, you get five touches and then on the sixth touch you would get a cancel and all, you know, the instruments that I play require at least, for example, the pipes require eight touches. The, the flute and whistle require six touches. They were impossible to do correctly on the iPhone, which is why you have apps like Ocarina. You know, they use basically four touches. But I needed, I needed eight. And um, so the first thing I did was to try to build a virtual uh, uh, true Illin bagpipe chanter and drone combination and was just completely blown away by the iPad. Um, it worked beautifully. Um, and not only worked beautifully, but some of the really subtle expressions and things like that that you, can, that you need to do on that instrument, as far as pitch bending and vibrato and all that, it was all very straightforward to do those things on the iPad. And it just took the whole app to a place I'd never really thought possible, which was um, you know, something that, you know, the fingerings are identical to the real instrument. The the way you interact with the with the um, devices is as close as I can make it to the real instrument, and it's become a really a legitimate, not a replacement for the acoustic instrument, but a but a you know a true representation of the instrument that someone who plays it or, or is interested in playing it and doesn't want to spend five or ten grand for the real instrument can get a very um, authentic experience of of playing it. Someone who already plays the instrument can use it as a practice instrument when they're, you know, in a place where they really don't want to haul out their pipes or their work or, you know, sitting in some place where you just simply couldn't do it on a bus or train or something like that. So, um, yeah, the iPad really just, in, I mean, these things were fast. I was able to bring these up in less than a week, you know, from, from when I first got my iPad. I had the Ilan piping app working in a couple of days. I was amazed that it was just basically like a great big iPhone <laughs> in terms of the, you know, just with a bigger screen and more touches. It was very straightforward to take my, my apps to, uh, uh, to, to, to use the new screen space and, and um, just handle more touch, simultaneous touches. So, Sure. When uh, you mentioned that it sounds exactly like the real instrument, yeah. do you, when you record the audio you're using for the apps, do you... I know on saxophone you have different timbers and sound qualities when you play really loud or really soft. Did you go about doing that? Um, yeah, so what I did was I recorded every note on, on all these apps. I've recorded every note individually from, the, um, um, from my own personal uh, acoustic instruments. Um, one of the interesting things about the pipes is that because um, um, it's a little different than like flute or saxophone. You know, flute or saxophone, you'd be blowing it with your lungs and you have control over the air pressure. The Illin pipes are a capped reed instrument. In other words, the reed itself is um, it's, it's being blown by a bellows and a bag. And there really isn't any volume control in the instrument, okay? So there, there's a little bit of, tim, little bit of timbre control by, um, by technique. But pretty much it's kind of like um, it has pretty much you know, a single dynamic range. So doing single samples of each of the notes uh, was sufficient as kind of a starting point for it. Um, it's an instrument with a lot of different sounds, and part of the part of the the trick with doing the samples was to come up with a representative set of samples, um, as well as how you interact with those samples that that would that would authentically represent the instrument, but wouldn't create an app that was you know 200 megabytes in size. I needed something that could that where all of the samples could live simultaneously 
uh, you know, in memory, and that limited me quite a bit because I wanted this, you know, I wanted this to run on the, you know, on the iPod Touch and all that. So I did have to do some trade-offs as far as sort of coming up with a single set of samples. Um, it turns out that in the on the iPad app, because I support bending, uh, or you can bend the notes into each other, that you actually get two versions of each node. You sort of get the note in its native sample, then you can. The way I've set up the bend range is you can bend. For example, an F sharp into a G, and the F sharp into the G sounds has a different timbre than the than the native G. So you do get a couple of ways to produce um, uh, a couple of different sounds for each note. But um, really, what you end up with the pipes is more in the sliding and the vibrato is really where the expression comes from on that instrument. And both of those things are possible on the app, pretty much done exactly like they are on the real instrument. And how are they, how's vibrato, for instance, done on the real instrument, and how is it implemented in the app itself? Um, well, it's done exactly the same way on um, both. Um, for example, um, if, you were, if you're familiar with any kind of a wind instrument, a very common thing would be to play a, a G, which would be your left hand would have all the holes covered, and your right hand would have all the covered holes open. And if, you, if, you have the, um, if you're playing a G and you take one of the fingers that's not the next finger down, next hole down on the chanter, and you cover that hole, it drops the pitch very slightly on the real instrument. And it's exactly how you do it on the, on the um, iPad version. You just, um, uh, it's called finger vibrato. That's how it's done in the real instrument. Again, because you're not using your lungs, you have to use your fingers. So you, you produce the vibrato by playing the note and then, um, and then kind of waggling your finger over um, one of the lower holes with your right hand. And uh, it produces exactly the same effect. It's actually a modulation of, uh, primarily a modulation of volume than pitch. So I, would, it's, I guess technically it's more of a tremolo sound, but um, it's done exactly the same way on both, on both the real and the virtual instrument. Okay. And you mentioned earlier that some of the instruments you don't exactly play, like the Haydn Tina, are the, the, Hayden, the sounds uh, Haydn? Uh, yeah, sorry. Hayden, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. The, yeah, there's several. There's like there's one called a Hayden, uh, and there's one called a McCann, and these were. It's interesting. They are physically the instruments are the same as. I mean, all of these concertinos are essentially the same. They're, they have. Um, uh, they're single reeded instruments. There's a button you press; it opens a valve, and it lets air through. A, it lets air through a reed, and so they all sound very, very similar. But the fingerings, it's like the keyboards are laid out completely differently. So, and you know, in on the angle concertina, it's kind of a horizontal arrangement, and there's a different note on the push and the pulls. On the English concertina, they're low, they're they're in a vertical arrangement, and it's the same note on the push and the pull. On the Hayden um, and the McCann, they're they're laid out kind of sort of like a piano. And they all have a very similar sound, but the buttons are just in different places. And um, they're used for different kinds of music. You know, the, the Engel concertina that I play is used mostly for Irish music. Um, um, I think there are some classical players, too. The English concertina is used for Morris dancing and uh, English music. Um, the Hayden, uh, the, you know, the, these other concertinas have their enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and be, but because they're so rare, it's like, you know, it's almost hard to get one. So having a virtual version of it so that you can kind of experiment with it and decide if they want to invest, you know, because these are expensive instruments. You know, the cheapest concertinas are about $2,500, uh, decent ones pr starting at five grand. You know, it's, it's a lot of money to spend to see if you like something. And this way, you know, someone can spend two, three bucks, try out one of these, you know, things, see if they like the fingering, if they can figure it out. And if they can use that, they can then go buy a real one. For the instruments that share the same sound base, uh, what made you decide to create totally separate apps rather than just clicking a button to change the interface between different fingerings? Right. Well, it turns out there's actually not a whole lot of overlap between the people that play these instruments. Um, so people that play Anglo pretty much only play Anglo, and people that play English pretty much only play English. So... Um, part of it was just... Um, um, for me, it was just easier to have separate apps um, I was learning, you know, I had only been programming for a few months when I did a lot of these apps, so I didn't really, you know, I didn't really know that much about coding. I knew kind of, you know, I knew how to put up a view and I knew how to handle controls and and how to make sounds. I mean, I my first apps were based on the AV, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 what was it called? The, the AV audio controller, which is the sim one of the simpler ways to make sounds. It has a higher latency, but it's extremely simple. <laughs> 
to, to work with. So I really kind of, um, part of it was just, I was learning how to do the development. And, um, you know, and um, I also realized that, that um, if I wanted to put all of these things in one app, I would probably want to charge more money for it. And I thought it would be easier uh, to just have a bunch of separate apps and charge, you know, only a couple bucks for, two, three bucks for them. Um, and, um, you know, and just sort of do those, you know, made very simple, like, okay, this one is that. If you want to, um, if you want a different instrument, you know, in the real life, you'd have to go buy another instrument. It's the same way with the different keys of concertinas. You know, people who play concertina, they buy one in one key and then they, uh, then they, you know, there, there are four different keys that concertinas come in, and so they might have to have a separate instrument. So I kind of use the same model of, well, sort of, you know, okay, if you want a CG, if you want a B flat F, G D, whatever. I actually had separate apps for them. Part of it was just, okay. part of it was part of it was just because they I would record, some of them had different ranges, and I would require different sample sets. I'm actually using different samples for some of the apps, um, but a lot of it was just it was easier for me to have a bunch of very simple, straightforward apps without a lot of having to change out view controllers and maintain all of the button maps and stuff. Okay. Yeah, and when folders come to the iPad, you can have those all in one folder and very accessible that way. Yeah. But as you mentioned, uh, a lot of it is just uh, performer only plays one, so that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, most people see- most people buy one or two of the of the particular flavor, and you know that's they kind of pick based on what their needs are. And, and what other instruments they play with, they sort of pick the key they need, and then they're usually pretty happy with it. Sure. I, I know, for instance, I, I'm a musician myself, and I I started on a recorder, and that was kind of my transition instrument to the clarinet. Do you see in the future when people have iPads, uh, using these as kind of teaching tools and learning tools before you get your hands on the, the real instrument? Uh, Per se. Um, you know, I, I, I hope so, um, at least from the standpoint of that these instruments are not something you go down to Guitar Center and buy. I mean, they're all handmade. They're all, um, none of these are mass produced. I mean, I guess there are some mass produced concertinas from China. They aren't particularly um, good quality. And, as, and to some extent, they, you know, if someone learns on one of those, they can get kind of turned off because they're actually more difficult to play than a quality instrument. Um, so as a result, the, the, the actual number of builders and instruments that are available is pretty small, and, um, and the prices, as a result, have gotten quite high. I mean, probably 10 years ago, you could buy a concertina for you know, uh, $800 or something. Like I say, now it's, it's, it's just ridiculous, and the, and the um, historical instruments or the, the antique instruments are, are, are insane. They're, they're up in the eight, nine, ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 range. So... You know, part of it is, is for these instruments to really keep going, right now they really have become sort of a boutique instrument. You know, if you can afford to spend that kind of money, um, you, know, y- you know, that's great. Or if you can, you know, if you can find an instrument, that's great. But a lot of times people have to get on a waiting list. You know, you'll, you'll want to order um, an instrument and you have to wait a year or two years just to get an instrument to start to play. What I'm, you know, what I see is some people are using these things as kind of um, a bridge while they're waiting for an instrument. Certainly, it's a way to allow them to, particularly on the iPad. I mean, the iPhone apps, you know, again, because I couldn't do a full representation of the instruments, they're useful, but they really, you know, they re- it really was on the iPad where where these things are true. I'm not going to say replacements. You wouldn't want to play one of these in a, you know, in a concert or a you know, in an Irish session, partially just because the other players would probably, you know, throw you out. <laughs> there are cultural, you know, um, re- resistance to this sort of thing. But um, in terms of teaching, yeah, I definitely see this as being something to expose people to the instrument, to um, allow them to learn to play, uh, you know, while they're waiting for an instrument or, you know, in situations that really... Um, you know, wouldn't allow them to have an instrument. A lot of people tell me, you know, that this is what they like to use at night if they live in like an apartment complex or a condo. The the only pipes aren't quiet, <laughs> and um, you know, this way you can practice, uh, you know, in headphones, um, which is impossible. Um, <laughs> you know, on the real instrument, there are there there is one uh, group uh, building a very sophisticated set of electronic uh, Illin pipes that are that are in the about two thousand dollar range. 
that you know can do kind of what I've done on the iPad that I'm selling for five bucks. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely for education for um, for people who already play that want something to. Um, uh, you know, I, I practice at work with mine. You know, if I'm waiting for a build or something, I, you know, I would never do that with the pipes because it's, you know, it takes, it, you know, it's, it's a lot of equipment to haul around. And, and um, you, like I said, there's no volume control. So, you know, on the iPad, mm-hmm. I can turn it down so that I can only hear it and I can work on some tunes while waiting for a compile to happen or something. So, um, yeah, definitely. I would really like to see it uh, eventually as the iPad gets more, you know, worldwide exposure and, um, you know, starts to get in the hands of music students and that sort of thing. I would really like to see some kind of a, you know, and I've thought about actually putting together some kind of a curriculum using the uh, iPad piping app as a way to uh, sort of introduce people to the instrument and teach them the basic skills, you know, the basic scales and and some of the ornamentation. Um, one of the things I did very specifically on the app is the, the actual fingering for the Elin pipes is fairly complicated. Um, uh, for someone who's just starting out, but while the whistle and the flute are actually much simpler. And by default, um, I built the app so that um, this that there's kind of two, mm, two fingering systems built into the app. There's kind of the flute f- whistle friendly one. That's the way it ships by default. But you can you can change some settings and sort of turn on the um, the more realistic piping, you know, uh, fingerings. Um, so it's, it's a good thing because if someone who plays the whistle already, the tin whistle can sort of, uh, use what they know and, and get a very satisfying experience playing the app and be able to do all the techniques for the whistle on the piping app. And they all work. Same thing for flute players. And so it gives them a kind of a way to bridge themselves and start to learn the differences between the two systems. Sure. Do you think uh, the iPad's just about to get launched internationally? Is there more of demand for this app in, say, Ireland, where I would imagine this instrument's more popular? Yeah. Well, I can tell you, um, my sales on the i on the iPhone apps have been about evenly distributed between um, uh, the U.S. and sort of Europe and um, U.K. combined. So I'm I'm expecting that when these uh, when the iPads available in Europe and in um, um, Great Britain and Ireland, um, I I probably I expect to see a pretty big uh, upturn in sales. Um, the uh, yeah, both on the concertina and the and the piping apps, they've been very popular you know, in Europe. I mean, I actually got a I actually you couldn't believe it. I actually got a a, a royalty payment from Australia, <laughs> which is huh. I, I was surprised that there were so many concertina and piping, you know, <laughs> app buyers in Australia. No offense, yeah. to, no offense to Australia, but I mean, I was really kind of thrilled. It was like, wow, you know. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So you've had good response from the professional. I'm not sure if there are professional concertina players out there from this app. Um, yeah, I've gotten, I've gotten, um, I've gotten very good response from uh, concertina players. Um, there's a um, there's a competition they do in Ireland every year called the All Ireland. It's kind of the um, um, the Olympics, you know, except it's annual for um, uh, Irish uh, traditional music. And um, I have a someone I know who's a concertina player who won the All Ir- who's an All Ireland winner who really likes the app, um, uses it as kind of a scratch pad, you know, for ideas and stuff. Um, um, I have other friends who play um, uh, professionally. Uh, who who use it? No, I mean again, nobody. I, nobody. I don't advocate using these things for actual performance, but you know they use it as a you know something to to play when it's just not appropriate to have your actual concertina out, you know, or something. If you know, I mean, especially the iP- the iPhone ones. You can, you know, you're standing in line waiting for the, you know, for uh, at Costco or something. And you can sit there, <laughs> you know, and, and work on a few tunes. You know, it's a, it's 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 nice just having it in your pocket. Sure. Are there any are there any updates that you wish to do to the app? Or are they um, are you happy with them as they are right now? Yeah, I've done a I've done a few uh, updates, mostly based on um, either I've learned to do something new. Like for example, one of the biggest things was when I went from the um, AV Audio Player uh, APIs to using OpenAL. It was a huge huge difference in terms of my ability to control the sound as well as the latency. And, um, and, you know, I went back and I re- retrofitted all the apps, changed the audio engine over to OpenAL. 
Um, so I've done major changes as I've learned to, you know, do things. Um, mostly though, these days, um, I'm doing updates as either I figure out some, you know, new thing that always like, you know, I'll get some idea. I'm like, Oh, I was, I've got to do that, you know, and I'll go home and I'll spend the weekend coding and, and issue a new update. But mostly the updates I've done so far have been based on, um, on requests from the, um, users. Uh, I mean, some of it's very simple, you know, I mean, I have these, um, and along with the acoustic versions, I have MIDI versions that use the Wi-Fi. There's a, there's a really nice open source uh, thing called DS Wi-Fi MIDI that allows you to do, do um, MIDI over uh, Wi-Fi. And I've read, I have versions of all the apps that do MIDI, which, um, which to me is actually the coolest, <laughs> the coolest <laughs> thing, because I have a rack of synths at home, you know, of old style, uh, uh, old school Roland, you know, rack mounted synths and stuff. And I just, I think it's just incredibly cool hooking up the piping apps to them. But, um, but like simple stuff, you know, somebody wanted, I have a keyboard. Uh, it's a very simple MIDI keyboard. Uh, it uses the, it's two octave keyboard. It uses the tilt to extend various MIDI parameters. And somebody said, you know, it'd be great if I could just like shift the whole keyboard up or down an octave. And if, and if I had a button I could press, you know, while I'm playing, because he was using it for um, inputting music into Sibelius. And um, so it was like, oh, yeah, okay, great. You know, so I, you know, stuck a couple of buttons on there and, and, uh, you know, it was very simple and submitted the update and he was thrilled. And, you know, anytime any gives, anybody gives me a suggestion for the apps, you know, usually, I mean, most things are fairly straightforward to do if they're, you know, if they're not, um, you know, f sort of fundamentally in conflict with what I, you know, with the way the app works, I generally will try to try to get it out for people. Sure. That's impressive to me that there's apps out there that actually communicate with Sibelius and Finale. Because I, I use Finale and I didn't think... Yeah. There's a way to do that, yeah. I guess Absolutely, there is. yeah. So most of these, it, it, there's a lot of these MIDI apps now that what happens is you have this wireless MIDI, you have this app. Um, it uses the Wi-Fi to talk to a little server app that runs on your PC or your Mac. And then there's a little, it um, uh, depends on if you're on PC or Mac, but on PC you run a little, uh, you run another little app that's a, a loopback application. And um, it becomes your MIDI source for whatever sequence you're using. So you can either do um, live uh, playback, for example, if you're using a software synthesizer, like um, any of the ones from Native Instruments, for example, you can um, use a soft synth on a um, laptop and um, play it from the iPhone. The real, the, the thing that's really amazing is that you can have, because MIDI is 16 channels, right? You can have right. 16 iPhones <laughs> all on the same <laughs> Wi-Fi network, all talking to the same software synthesizer, playing different instruments. Oh, wow. That's and you really can cool. do that with my apps. You know, I've, I've done this where we've set up, like, I've got one friend playing the piping app, um, you know, on the iPad, and I'm playing the regulators um, on the iPhone talking to my MIDI rack, you know. I mean, there's some really, mm -hmm. like, totally way, I mean, just amazing, crazy stuff that people can, can do once they kind of get what's going on here. Um, and uh, I, there's there's quite a few apps actually now in the App Store now that use this um, this DS MIDI Wi-Fi infrastructure, um, and I definitely would encourage people to check them out because there's some just outrageous, uh, you know, outrageous possibilities there. Um, you know, I mean, like I say, I've taken all of my apps, so my piping apps, you know, and and, and same thing on the iPad. The iPad piping app has a has a, um, a MIDI equivalent, and it's probably the only true. Um, wind instrument simulator for the iPad on MIDI uh, that exists right now. And um, uh, if you're a wind player, you might want to check it out. I, I sent it, I sent you, uh, you should definitely check it out. It's, it's, it's a trip. Yeah, that is totally cool. Cause I could definitely see educational setting. You have students that have, you know, iPads or iPhones or iPod touches and you're communicating to this master computer you could do performances that way. It'd be a great teaching tool. That's, I yeah. mean, as myself, I'd love this. I don't pull, have to pull out that USB keyboard, that MIDI keyboard anymore to enter notes. That's, yeah, no, exactly. That's so cool. That's exactly, yeah, it's exactly how people are using it. They're, um, um, they, it's so simple because, um, you know, you, you just have to run the app, and if you've got the server, it's just this little server you run, it just magically, you know, appears as a MIDI device. What's really weird is you can be anywhere in the house. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so what's yeah. strange is to be like in the kitchen with your iPhone and hearing the sound coming out of your office at the other end of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And with like zero latency. <laughs> it's very, very strange. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'll have to check some of those apps out. I mean, I, I've talked to different music educators about this, and I've read about the wired solution through the dock connector that's coming out later this year. But yeah, no, there's no need. Yeah, you don't need that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, are there any other apps in the works? What's kind of the future of uh, the iPad platform to you? Um, I've got a couple of people who have requested some very exotic concertinas to be run on the iPad. Um, um, my what I'm doing these days is pretty much because I don't play a lot of these stranger instruments as I sell them. Just send me a, you know, send me an image uh, that you know a 1024 by 768, and you know, tell me where the buttons go and what pitches go on the buttons, and I'll see what I can do. Because it's really once I have the, you know, the I'm not a graphic artist, and and so you know, for me, it's like it takes much longer to do the. Um, to do the artwork than it does sometimes the apps. Um, so I'm trying. I'm, I'm thinking about doing some of those. Um, there is interest in doing. Uh, I've had people ask me about uh, Irish flute, uh, whistle. Um, there's some other instruments that are a possibility. A lot of it has to do with just my um, being able to use the audio APIs. There are definitely limitations in the OpenAL APIs I use today um, that I that I can't work around. Unfortunately, just because of the way Apple um, uh, chose to implement some of those things, so I have to kind of take it to the next level. I have to go down to the to the lower level APIs and handle my own uh, streaming and mixing and that sort of thing. Probably going forward, mostly having to do with the um, uh, sample uh, start and release control. You don't have a whole lot of control over releases when you use the OpenAL APIs, and that sometimes gives you uh, not you know sort of. Um, Audio anomalies, which are okay on the pipes because it's very percussive, sort of a sort of a binary switch kind of a sound. But for things that are more fluid, it's a bit it's a bit um, it's a bit crude. So I need to kind of take to take it to the next level. Um, but no, nothing really, nothing really beyond that at this point. I'm, I I kind of need to take a just kind of a break from it for a little bit to kind of um, you know just kind of get my uh, get my head together and figure out what's next. Okay, awesome. It's been really interesting because uh, my backgrounds as a as a composer and uh, really you know traditional woodwinds and that whole family of uh, you know as people know traditional orchestras. So it's been really interesting hearing about you know uh, Irish instruments and different things like that. Uh, where can people find out more information about what you're up to and where to find all these different apps at? Sure. Um, well, the best place is to uh, go to my website, which is uh, www.tradlessons, that's T-R-A-D-L-E-S-S-O-N-S dot com. Um, originally, the site and it was for teaching people to play the um, Irish whistle, pipes, and flute, and concertina. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, um, about 100 plus videos up there of, uh, and it's all free. Just uh, showing playing the, these um, tunes on these instruments first fast and then slow, so people can watch my fingers and all that. But off of that, there's a um, a page which has all of the apps um, and links. Each app has its own website. Uh, so from if you go to the Trad Lessons homepage, you'll see a click that says "Click here to learn about my iPod apps." And then you'll see the um, uh, links to the individual apps as well. Um, I also have uh, a lot of videos, demo videos on YouTube. Uh, if you just search for Trad Lessons or uh, or my name, uh, you'll find them. Um, there's um, pretty much all of the all of the apps have demo videos, so you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, those are really the best two ways. Um, you know, I'm very interested in hearing from. Um, from anybody who actually has the apps, uh, you know, if there's any, you know, features people want, or if you're using it in, you know, some uh, interesting way that, um, you know, I would love to hear about it. I've, I've, I've seen videos from performance artists using some of this stuff in some very in ways I would have never expected, and it's always interesting to sort of learn what the unintended consequences are of, of the things that you uh, kind of unleash into the world. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you for sharing your time with me tonight. It was a uh, thrill to talk to a, a developer out there that's creating some of the great possibilities uh, for music with the iPad. Yeah, you're most welcome. I really encourage if people, you know, if you've got a particular thing that you've got a vision for and, you know, 
that's the key, I think, to building these apps is, is you know, I, like the only reason I built these apps is I realized one day that if I wasn't going to do it, nobody else was going to do it. And, you know, and now I've got 31 apps on the store. Um, I'm having a great time with it. It's a, it's a great kind of a second uh, after hours career. And uh, I really encourage, I, I can tell you this much, developing for iPhone and iPad has been the most fun I've had doing software development in my career. The, the tools provided by Apple, the environment, all of that has just been an absolute joy to use. And, um, you know, I, if anybody's even thinking about, uh, about getting, you know, going down this path, I highly encourage you, you know, watch the Stanford videos, get the books from A Press and other, other companies that are, have all these great preparatory materials and just go for it. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, we'll get on with the rest of the podcast now. I've got a couple other instruments to uh, discuss and talk about, but thank you uh, for your time. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. So that was the interview I had with Michael Eskin. And once again, find more information about him at tradwins, uh, tradlessons.com. And I'd like to thank him once again for his time and some very informative things that I didn't even think we'd be talking about, such as wireless MIDI. And I'm, I'll be researching that in the future. And I think it brings great possibility to the composer and music educator as far as what you can do with these iPads and iPhones. So uh, with that said, I'll take you on to the rest of the episode. We've got a couple more instruments to go, and I'll take you there right now. So one thing more app. I believe I'm going to do one more after this, which was actually designed for the iPhone, but I feel warrants its attention here on the iPad uh, as well, it is called Chinese Zither. And it's a $1 app that if you're looking for Chinese Zither, this one, it, it works well, but nothing truly special about it. Here's the sounds you can expect out of it. That's the classic zither, and then it also has a modern zither built in. So it's a very simple app. You just basically touch the strings, and it will play sounds. And you can actually touch the piano for some background music to play on top of. But it's a pretty basic app, and I, I'd recommend it if you're looking for a zither. But if not, it's nothing to you know, be too concerned about having on your iPad. So the final app I would like to talk about uh, for a few minutes here is an iPhone app that works great on the iPad, and that is called, it's called Cosmovox. And for those familiar with it, it's uh, basically a theremin that is now on your iPad through this app. And it's very simple. If you don't know what a theremin is, it's uh, basically an electronic instrument that as you move your hands around, it changes the uh, dynamics of the instrument and the pitch of the instrument. So the concept here is you move the iPad and it changes the pitch. And I'll demonstrate that here audioly and right now. So as you can probably hear, So as I'm moving the instrument, the iPad in this case, it'll actually change pitch and adjust pitch and all those great things. And you can adjust the modulation and all sorts of other things, but it, it works on the iPad very well. It's not optimized for it. It looks like an iPhone app as it is, but it runs perfectly well on the iPad. So uh, that kind of concludes the discussion on instrument apps for the iPad. I hope you found this episode's infor this episode informative as far as what's possible on the iPad as far as creating music through instruments available on uh, this platform currently because there are a lot of great instruments, a lot of keyboard instruments especially available for the iPad that come to great benefit for musicians. I've used some of these apps to really revolutionize how I practice in uh, 
prepare myself as a musician at a university. And some of these apps bring great benefit to musician and have brought enormous possibilities as far as what is possible for uh, the future of musicians. I could see some creating, you know, rock bands or not rock bands, but, you know, ensembles with just electronic instruments through, you know, iPads and iPhones. So I think there's enormous potential here. And I think it was a, uh, a great uh, discussion to have. So uh, on future episodes, I'm going to be covering music as well in the next week's show. And next week, I think I'll be concentrating more on music education in the iPad. As far as if you want to learn music, if you want to learn sheet music, if you want to learn how to play instruments, if you want to learn uh, different things about music, music theory, all of those other things, Next week's show will be focused on music education in the iPad. What apps can you use to uh, learn music? What apps are great for children so they can learn music at a young age and get immersed in that? What are the apps out there for that? So that's going to be next week's show. And we'll have another show after that with different music apps. I've uh, basically gone through a single page worth of apps that uh, I'm very excited to dive into the other types of apps. But I thought the music instruments would be the most appealing to uh, a lot of people because of just the fun things that can happen when you're just playing music instruments on the iPad. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I do have a number of promo codes to give away uh, with this episode. So a lot of the developers, uh, most of these apps I did get free of charge from the developers and they gave me some extra codes for most of them here. And if you would like any of these apps, please email me. It's first come first serve basis. Whoever emails these, uh, basically the app name with promo in caps after that as the subject header. And I will email you back. If you are, if you get a promo code, you'll get that promo code. So here are the apps I have access to. I have five copies of Piano Accordio Pro. So email me a Piano Accordio Pro promo if you want that app. I've got five copies of Accordio Pro. So email me. I have Badharan Drum, a single copy of that. I have a copy of Whistle Slide, which I did not discuss, but that's available. I have three copy, uh, four copies of Church Organ if you would like that. And I have a single copy of Synth available. So those are the different promos I have available. Free, basically, they're just codes that you enter into iTunes and you get them free of charge. So those are the apps that we have this week and we'll have more next week, some very exciting ones to share with you next week. But just email me at iPadPossibilities at gmail.com and I will email you the promo code if you are early enough to get that. So that is another benefit of being on the premium podcast. You'll get the shows early and get those announcements early about promo codes. So you get the first calm basis on promo codes if you are a part of that premium uh, podcast because I will actually start sending out an uh, email like a listserv of when I get promo codes in and you'll be the first to know about them. So uh, that's another reason to be on the premium podcast and those are the promo codes this week. So feedback, as I have said before, is always welcomed and uh, appreciated. You can do that by calling in 209-542-4723. That's iPad. Uh, So 209-542-4723. Or you can email me at iPadPossibilities at gmail.com. And all feedback is greatly appreciated. I do hope you appreciate these seg these. uh, basically in-depth looks at different markets that I'm starting to do after uh, it's kind of funny. I saw a review on iTunes saying he was really disappointed. He didn't see a bunch of music episodes, even though I've, I've done a couple, but I decide there are a lot of music apps out there. I haven't discussed all of them or taken a good in-depth look at them. And I thought what better opportunity would I have than to just go out there and do that? So I've emailed a bunch of the developers and starting with this episode, I've got the music instrument episodes and a bunch of different music episodes to come in the coming weeks. But the great thing about this show is we have a a Monday and a Friday show, two other episodes every week that I can devote to other things besides music. So if you're not a music lover, I hope you'll just appreciate the show in general that we do have that flexibility of covering a wide variety of things and helping you expand your horizons of what the iPad brings to a consumer with the power behind it through the different apps available. 
So uh, thanks for your time this week, and we will speak again on the Friday-Saturday show this week. And before I leave you, I'd like to just uh, mention some of the ways you can support this podcast. To support this podcast, it's very simple. You can simply go to iTunes, and one of the best ways to support this podcast is to simply review the show there. So uh, reviews are greatly appreciated. What do you love about the show? What do you like about the show? Uh, those kind of things, and rate the show there in iTunes. Uh, another great way to support the show and uh, probably the best way outside of iTunes is to become a member of the premium podcast. If you go to the possibilities network.com, that is where this show is found. And there you will find all the information you need to know about the premium podcast. Some of the benefits to you is uh, with it only being $2 a month, I will start having as I have promo codes for different apps and that membership will pay over and over for itself again and again because you'll be the first to know about the promo codes available and you get a chance to have access to those before anybody else and can snatch them up before uh, the people on the regular feed get them by being a premium member. So you also uh, get access to the shows Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You get extra episodes, you get ad-free episodes, and that's all available as a premium member. So a lot of great things. If you just go to thepossibiliesnetwork.com, you can check out all of those great benefits right there. And uh, another way to support this podcast is through the application we have in the App Store. It's called the iPad Possibilities Podcast app. It's $2.99, and you can find it in the App Store today. And with that app, you get the episodes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So thank you once again for your support of this podcast. And if you want to find out more information about this podcast, just go to thepossibilitiesnetwork.com, where this show and many other shows are found. So check us out there. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is T-C-H-A-T-E-N. So check me out on Twitter. I tweet about a lot of the iPad things going on. So check me out there. And until the next episode, this is Tim Chatton of the iPad Possibilities Podcast.